Hello, I'm Hugo Mackay and this is my presentation on plasma wake field acceleration, a promising technique for accelerating high energy beams of electrons in a very short distance. Before learning about plasma wake field acceleration, let's first back up a step by asking what is a particle accelerator? A particle accelerator is a scientific device which utilizes electric and magnetic fields to accelerate, focus, and steer beams of charged particles to high energies and velocities near the speed of light. Over 30,000 particle accelerators are in use, ranging in application from cancer proton therapy to semiconductor manufacturing via a method known as ion implantation, but the most advanced and powerful accelerators, such as the LHC, are used for high energy physics, or particle physics. Inside a particle accelerator, two high energy beams of particles are accelerated in opposite directions and are passed right through each other. A lot of the particles miss each other during this, but some of the particles within these beams collide, and the collision energy is converted into the mass of new particles through E equals mc squared. These particles are then detected and analyzed by particle detectors within the accelerator. Current accelerators used for high energy physics are known as radio frequency or RF accelerators, and there are two main technologies behind how they function, radio frequency accelerating cavities and superconducting electromagnets. These work together to accelerate, focus, and steer high energy beams of particles. Firstly, let's discuss RF accelerating cavities. These generate an intense electric field from radio waves, which as you probably know are electromagnetic radiation, meaning they are disturbances in the electric and magnetic fields. When these waves are launched into the accelerating cavities, the shape and size of which is specially designed to allow them to resonate, the radio waves are amplified, generating a very strong oscillating electric field. The passing of the particle beam through the accelerating cavities is timed to match the oscillation of this electric field, so that the beam gets a kick in energy each time it passes through. This must happen many times for the beam to reach a sufficient energy, which can either be done in a straight line as in a linear accelerator, or as in a circular accelerator called a synchrotron, the beam is curved in a circle, cleverly allowing the RF accelerating cavities to be reused. This of course raises the question, how do we bend particle beams in a circle? And the answer is with superconducting electromagnets. These are electromagnets made from a special material such as niobium titanium, which when cooled to below a certain critical temperature attains superconducting properties, including having no electrical resistance. This allows large electrical currents to flow through the electromagnet, generating powerful magnetic fields as strong as 8.3 Tesla. Inside synchrotrons like the LHC, two main types of superconducting electromagnets are used. Quadrupole magnets, used to focus the beam, and dipole magnets, used to curve the beam in a circular trajectory. Quadrupole magnets consist of four symmetrically arranged magnetic poles. This configuration generates a magnetic field that is focusing in one axis but not for the other. To overcome this, accelerators are built with many quadrupole magnets, which alternate between vertically focusing and horizontally focusing configurations. Spaces between the quadrupole magnets are necessary to ensure the magnetic fields don't cancel each other out, as they would if the quadrupole magnets were arranged adjacently. Dipole magnets consist of two magnetic poles which generate a magnetic field. The magnets are oriented to exert a centripetal force on the beam as it passes through the field. This force accelerates the beam perpendicularly to its velocity because of this equation, making the beam follow a circular path. Radio frequency accelerators are extraordinary tools which have made groundbreaking achievements in physics possible, such as the discovery of the Higgs boson. However, this technology has its limitations and reaching significantly higher energies with it may soon be impractical. One of these limitations is the fact that the strength of the electric fields within RF accelerating cavities is limited by something called dielectric breakdown. This occurs when the voltage between two plates exceeds a certain breakdown threshold, at which point a spark will form. Inside a particle accelerator, if the radio waves are cranked up too high in an attempt to reach stronger electric fields, parts of the accelerator could melt. This puts a cap on how much energy can be squeezed into each accelerating cavity, and if the electric fields cannot get any stronger, the only way to reach higher energies is by passing the beam through an electric field more times. This can be achieved in two ways, by building longer and longer linear accelerators, or, as mentioned previously, by building synchrotrons to reuse the electric fields. However, even synchrotrons have a limitation, due to something called synchrotron radiation, which is the light emitted by charged particles when they feel a centripetal acceleration, the energy lost by a charged particle through synchrotron radiation increases as the particle gains energy and decreases with the larger circular trajectory of the particle. This makes it a limiting factor for the maximum energy attainable within a synchrotron 
and forces physicists to build larger accelerators to reduce the effect of synchrotron radiation. Designs for higher energy RF accelerators could soon become impractical, limited by concerns such as cost, time, and materials. In fact, CERN's next synchrotron is planned to be 100 kilometers in circumference, over three times longer than the LHC. Because of this, a change in particle accelerator technology is necessary to shift the focus from large designs to smaller, better ones. Plasma wakefield acceleration is a promising technique. This method cleverly exploits the properties of plasma to accelerate electron beams. But to understand how plasma can be manipulated, we should first know what it is. Plasma is a state of matter, resulting when a gas is ionized, meaning some of the electrons have been stripped from their atoms, transitioning the gas to a soup of heavy, positively charged ions and very light, negatively charged electrons, forming a state of matter that is very responsive to electric and magnetic fields called plasma. Now let's discuss how plasma wake field acceleration works. Firstly, the experimental setup consists of the plasma cell, which is a chamber filled with a metallic vapor such as lithium or rubidium. It also includes an ionization laser used to turn this metallic vapor into a plasma, as well as an RF accelerator to get the electron beams up to their initial energy before entering the plasma cell. The process of plasma wake field acceleration can be broken down into three steps, ionization and RF acceleration, beam entrance and wake field production, and witness bunch acceleration. Firstly, the metallic vapor within the plasma cell is ionized by the laser. An RF accelerator is used to bring two electron beams up to the energy required before entering the plasma cell. These beams are known as the drive and witness bunches. As the electron beams then enter the plasma, the drive bunch, because of its negative charge, repels the background plasma electrons like a boat driving through a still lake, while the positively charged ions are practically unmoved due to their large mass. The positive charge of this collection of ions attracts the electrons back in toward each other, forming a bubble of positive charge which follows the drive bunch through the plasma. The electric field produced by this bubble, called the wake field, accelerates the witness electron bunch, giving it a significant energy boost over a short distance. In terms of energy, a handoff occurs between the drive and witness bunches. The mechanism for this handoff is the wake field, which is a very efficient method, showing a 30% energy transfer efficiency which could rise to 80% with Slack's new Facet 2 facility. This method of plasma wake field acceleration is just one of several. Other techniques involve using a high energy light pulse in place of the drive electron bunch, accelerating beams of positrons, the antimatter particle of the electron, and using a proton drive bunch that can penetrate farther into the plasma. This last method allows for more acceleration of the witness electron bunch and therefore a higher final energy. Plasma wake field acceleration has some significant advantages over radio frequency acceleration. Firstly, the electric fields generated within a plasma can be several orders of magnitude stronger than the fields produced by an RF accelerating cavity. This is because the strength of an electric field within a plasma is limited by mechanical properties rather than dielectric breakdown. This results in electrons getting accelerated a lot faster, being boosted to energies 400 to 500 times greater than what they would gain inside an RF accelerator over the same length. This allows plasma wake field accelerators to be much more compact, covering mere meters as opposed to kilometers. Also, because plasma wake field acceleration has a high energy transfer efficiency, its power consumption is relatively low. Finally, all these factors result in plasma wake field acceleration being more cost efficient and cost effective than RF acceleration. Particle accelerators are indispensable instruments when it comes to high energy physics, providing physicists with an experimental way of testing theoretical models and discovering new physics. The limits of particle accelerators are constantly being pushed to achieve higher energies, more extreme collisions, and more elusive particles. Plasma wake field acceleration with its strong electric fields, high efficiency, and compact design could lead to the next substantial energy breakthrough, hopefully taking physicists closer to unlocking the fundamental workings of the universe.